2024 can be the year for silver investors and gold investors. Believe me, it will happen. It can happen. Two of the biggest mainstream financial media outlets, CNBC and Reuters, both were talking about precious metals? What? That never happens. We're going to talk about what both of them said, and in particular, Reuters had some crazy good information for silver investors and gold investors. We're going to go uh, talk about that, but also we're going to talk about other major factors coming in 2024, one that I think will be the behemoth that not many people are talking about that will cause the price of silver and gold to skyrocket. And we're going to talk about digital gold and digital silver. Love it or hate it, we aren't going to take away your ability to hold physical. If you don't hold it, you don't own it, right? We're going to talk about that as well and why that could be a major exciting development coming in the next 12 months. It could be crazy for us silver and gold investors. CNBC, CNBS is what a lot of us call it. They never talk about silver and gold. But have you ever noticed when you do watch CNBC, I don't recommend watching it more than 10 minutes a day, but if you do, look at the bottom right corner. They're always putting up the price of silver and gold. I wonder why. We talk about that same thing with Yahoo Finance. Why do they have the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and then the next thing they list on the top banner of their page is the price of silver and gold because it matters. That's why. Because they know it's the only form of real money. Like our old friend John Exter from the United States Federal Reserve. Do you guys know about Exter's Pyramid? Read about it. It's an inverted pyramid. This was written by a man who spent most of his career at the Federal Reserve. And he talked about, in no uncertain terms, how no matter how you slice it, no matter how you dice it, <laughs> we got news for you. At the end of the day, everything, electronic money, uh, paper money, debt, derivatives, everything in the whole financial world rests on a little base, a little solid base of silver and gold. But you you want to know, what did CNBC say about silver and gold? Well, let me tell you what they said. They have a, a segment apparently called the three stock lunch. And they got to the end of it and they said, well, this last thing we're going to talk about isn't really a stock. We're going to talk about gold and is gold a good investment? Rah, 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 rah. We're going to show you a couple uh, pharmaceutical commercials and then a, uh, a farmer's insurance commercial. And we're going to come back and talk about gold. You ever notice that? Am I the only one? Like the little bit that I watch Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSP, not MSP, MSNB, whatever they are. All they have are auto insurance commercials and pharmaceutical commercials. Why do they have to advertise pharmaceuticals anyway? That doesn't make any sense. Gold. On CNBC, this is what the analyst said. He said, the price action has been good. Check. We know that, right? There's a lot more. But he also said gold and silver are notorious for fake outs, meaning they start to go up and then they drop back down, right? Oh, well, we know that, okay? But we also know, right? There was a fake out that occurred from the year 2000 onward when gold went up multiple times in value. Those fake outs don't always last. And we know from a technical perspective that gold had bumped up against this level that it's at now three times. That's called a triple high, guys. And anyone who's a professional in the world of investing and trading will tell you that double tops like that are very rare. Triple tops are even more rare. Quadruple tops are almost never heard of. Most likely, statistically, we're in for much higher prices for gold, and that will mean much higher prices for silver in 2024. This analyst then went on to say, gold needs to break above $2,100. He talked about silver too. $2,100 and hold that on a monthly basis. That means that at the end of the month, like at the end of January, the end of February, we need gold above $2,100. But but and we got more information here from this Reuters article that is going to blow your brains in, in terms of that. He said, gold's mostly a fear trade on fiat, uh, but we're having major geopolitical 
and monetary problems right now in the United States. Then they actually talked about silver. They said, well, you know, silver, a lot of people are saying, this is CNBC, okay? This was like a three-minute segment. They talked about how silver will outperform gold if indeed gold does go on this great run into 2024. CNBC, yes, the home of that unbelievably intelligent, honest, and great uh, uh, analyst, Jim Cramer. Yeah, Cramer was not in on this, but who knows? Are we going to have Jim Cramer? Oh, gosh, a lot of people say Jim Cramer is the kiss of death, that when he says to buy something, that means to sell. So maybe we don't want Jim Cramer talking about gold and or silver. They didn't talk about the mining stocks, but I'm telling you guys, the gold and silver mining stocks are still in deep, deep, deep value territory and have the potential to have unbelievable runs next year. Look, any of these things we talk about, silver, gold, the mining stocks, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm telling you what I see out there. I synthesize it, present it to you, offer my opinion, maybe a little bit of humor thrown in as well, but don't make any financial decisions based upon anything that I'm saying here today. So what does it mean that CNBC's on a, on, a, on a key segment of their show talking about silver and gold. Think about Costco. What's going on with Costco, right? Think about people are sending me now more and more Walmart links. And I don't know if Walmart has yet started selling gold and silver directly. They've been selling it for a while, but Walmart has been selling gold and silver through mostly third-party uh, companies on their walmart.com website. Costco is selling directly to people, not just gold. Don't forget, they sold $100 million of gold essentially in the last three months. It'll be super interesting to see what these next three months produce in terms of their gold sales. But then we get news that they're selling silver, our favorite silver. Yes, they're selling tubes of 20 American Silver Eagles to the American public. I'll tell you who's happy about that. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Thomas Jefferson, Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin, the founders, the foundation of our country, right? George Washington, Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> What's the other guy I'm trying to think? Oh, Andrew Jackson. They're, they're loving. They are, they're, they're up in heaven and they're looking at Costco and saying, way to go, Costco. You're giving the American people what we wanted them to have all along. Because don't forget, guys, it's in the United States Constitution that gold and silver are legal tender. And we've got it moving across the country right now. 2024, another big factor that we're going to be talking about massive potential factor of demand for metals is as more and more states take concrete action to pass legal tender legislation to give their citizens the ability to reclaim a right that was given to them by their founding fathers to use silver and gold as legal tender. Part of that, part of that potential is asset-backed digital currencies. Now, don't run away. Don't get mad. Don't throw virtual ding-dongs at me, okay? Asset-backed digital currencies, okay? That would mean that a state depository has silver and gold in their state vault. It's audited. It's regulated. We're not talking about fart knocks where nobody knows how much gold is really there because the American people, even though it's ours, we're not allowed to know or see that it's actually there. We just have to believe, right? Kind of like we just have to believe in the value of the dollar, right? No, these state depositories would be transparent, audited, and you could then have a digital claim on one or 10 or a thousand, let's say, ounces of silver in that state depository. But you could have a digital claim on whatever amount of silver you own in this state depository. Okay, you could then use that functionally. Now, let's say you want to go buy a new television for $250 and you think, oh, it's going to cost me about 10 ounces of silver. Okay, well, instead of having to pick up 10 ounces of silver and take it to the, to the electronics store and then look at you funny, this would facilitate your ability to use silver to buy that 
television. The silver would be transferred from your account to someone. They would then have a claim on it. Uh, if they wanted to convert it back into dollars, it's all very transparent, very easy. And the big key to remember here, before we all yell and say, I don't want digital nothing. We're not talking about cryptocurrency here. Okay, we're not. We're not talking about another Bitcoin or Dogecoin or whatever moon coin they came up with. No, we're talking about an asset-backed digital currency. There's a big, 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 big difference. And we have to realize that. And what it could do is make silver and gold much more functional, number one. Number two, in doing so, it could create massive demand for the metals, for silver, for gold. The individual states can do this on their own because the founding fathers were afraid of the big government getting too much power, too much control. They wanted they want us to move to CBDCs. That's what we should be afraid of, right? And that's what the founding fathers were afraid of. It, it's it's okay to talk about this. You are a patriot if you're talking about this because that's what your founding fathers. It's no different now than it was 150, 200 years ago. Listen to what Thomas Jefferson talked about with central banks, right? Banks, big banks, central banks were the biggest threat to our country, more of a threat than an invading army. Thomas Jefferson said that, okay? So talking about this and being behind this is actually what our original founding fathers wanted when they granted us the U.S. Constitution, when they granted us those forms of liberty. Fortuna Silver Mines is a global intermediate gold and silver producer. Since 2005, Fortuna's best-in-class management has delivered impressive growth and profits. Fortuna's solid financial position and operational expertise allows for performance in any precious metals price cycle and provides a foundation from which to harvest great profits in more favorable metals markets. Investing in Fortuna is an investment in quality, long-term, sustainable production of in-demand precious and base metals. This is from Reuters. Gold to enter 2024 with sights set on record highs. Now, we're talking about silver, too. We're going to get a record in silver. You watch. Old Smitty the Silver Bear, huh? He's ready for it. Uh, gold investors anticipate record high prices next year when the fundamentals of dovish pivot in U.S. interest rates, continued geopolitical risk, and central bank buying are expected to support the market after a volatile 2023. Okay, we know that already. All right, we know that, right? Interest rates, dovish interest rates, geopolitical risk. Spot gold was up 13% in 2023. That's awesome. Woohoo! Silver treaded water, but silver had a bunch of cruddy negative impact uh, uh, things going on with it. Okay, here's a quote. This is this is the golden information right here. And I got then I got the big X factor, but this is the golden information, the golden silver information, the silver lining, if you will. This is a quote. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna credit the author on this. Following on from a surprisingly robust performance in 2023. We see further price gains in 2024. They're talking about gold and silver. Driven by a trifecta of momentum, momentum chasing hedge funds. We haven't heard about that. We haven't even talked about that. That's new. The hedge funds are going to be chasing gold. Okay, the momentum, and it's already started. Central banks continuing to buy physical gold at a firm pace. We already knew that. And not and not least, renewed demand from ETF investors. That came from our old friend Ole Hansen at Saxo Bank. He's seen ETF inflows into silver, into gold. He's seen, this is the big golden nugget, the hedge funds now chasing gold, chasing the momentum that gold has. We know once gold gets a close above $2,100 on a monthly basis, that's really going to wake up a lot of people. JP Morgan, 
yes, that J.P. Morgan, the one that controls the metal markets, sees a breakout rally. And guys, when we're talking about gold, we're talking about silver, and silver will move even more dramatically. A breakout rally for gold in mid-2024. Well, that goes right with what we're, what, what, what basement dwellers are saying. We're going to get above 2100, and by May, we're going to get to 2600 in gold. A breakout rally in mid-2024 with a targeted peak, this is J.P. Morgan, of $2,300, okay? UBS forecast a record of $2,150 by the end of 2024. We've got Reuters and CNBC. What is that telling us? Both putting out very, very positive, bullish commentary about gold. And when they're talking about gold, we know they're also talking about silver. Don't forget to please give this a thumbs up, guys. Thumb there, thumb. It's somewhere down there that helps get the word out. I want you to come back. I want you to feel welcome. Uh, I want you to also realize I do my best to get all this crazy information that's going on out there, synthesize it into what I think is uh, educational and somewhat entertaining. You have a head on your shoulders as well. You can think for yourself. And I know you know that. And that's why those are the type of people that come here. Listen to what I have to say. Listen to other people. Develop your own thesis. Share your ideas with us because your thoughts matter. We learn from each other. Trust me. I tried to figure it all out up here for years. It doesn't work out too well. Okay, we have the ability to help each other. And that's what us basement dwellers like to do. Let's talk about the X factor. Let's talk about the little, the little gem that could seriously propel the silver price and gold price next year. I believe right now we are in a state of a little tight window of deflation in this country. And that's the D word. The other D word is depression. I believe we are, we are witnessing right now the most intense part of like a thunderstorm, the result of financial mismanagement by our leaders, the result of monetary mismanagement by our Federal Reserve, the result of, of all the money printing, now the result of all the interest rate hikes that went on over the last year and a half, two years, which if we listened to them three years ago, weren't supposed to happen until right now anyway, but that's a whole different story. It's all coming together. We've got a little deflationary window, a little hit that's occurring right now. That's why the Fed is freaking and going to pivot. And I'm telling you guys, we will get that inflation surge again next year. I think it's very, very likely. Now, I think when the inflation surge hits this time, we're going to see an uptick in investor demand for silver and gold. Here's a little secret. The only thing that kept us from getting 30 or $35 silver right now is the fact that investors sold silver last year. It's happening at the coin shops. It's happening with the ETFs. It's happening on the big exchanges. Okay, people were selling. Like, not you and me. I didn't sell any silver. But overall, there was selling pressure in silver. That's the only thing that kept us from right now having $30 or $35, $40 possibly silver. Well, the only thing that kept gold from being at $23, $2,400 right now was some selling pressure right from investors, not from central banks. They were buying. That helped buoy. But if we get just the smallest shift in investor demand, and that's what Ole Hansen's talking about, increased ETF buying, okay, increased coin shop buying, increased buying at places like Pimbex, our sponsor, the online bullion dealer. They've got increased buying because they do a great, great, great job, right? They're, they're bucking the trend because people are realizing that if they want to get gold, silver, or platinum, they go to our channel sponsor, Pimbex, like I did long before they sponsored the channel. If you check out Pimbex, if you're looking to get some silver, gold, or platinum, you're going to find their prices are always ultra competitive, usually the best of what you can find. Appreciate you being here today. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll plan on being here again tomorrow. Remember, every day for the rest of my life. Thank you.